before I start the video, I want to give you guys a quick disclaimer. Now, this camera was sent to me by SV Vony as per my request to review it. I'm not paid to say anything and I'm not forced to say anything. So this is my review and I'm going to be a honest reviewer. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hello everybody and welcome back to another Adrian Astro video and in today's video I'm going to be diving into a really cool piece of equipment. The SV Boney SV605CC cooled camera is the best camera for astrophotographers getting into cool astronomy cameras without breaking the bank. With a retail price of this camera being around $600, it is the most affordable cooled astronomy camera on the market today. Let's get into the details of this camera. The SV605CC is a 9 megapixel cooled CMOS camera that uses the Sony IMX533 sensor. The sensor has a square format, more specifically a 3008 by 3008 pixel. Um, one thing that really stands out uh, for this camera is its pixel size. Its pixel size is a 3.76 microns, and that is the sweet spot for signal to noise ratio and resolution when you're shooting a 400 millimeter focal length like me. Now this camera specializes in wide field deep space astrophotography. Now let's talk about the cooling. The SV605CC features a two stage tech cooling system. What's impressive is its ability to drop temperatures up to 40 degrees below ambient. This keeps noise levels super low, even during those long summer nights when heat can ruin your data. Noise reduction is a game changer for bringing out the faint details in objects like galaxies and nebulae. Now I have been testing this camera for the past few days with my Skywatcher Evolux 62 ED telescope. This is a 400 millimeter refractor telescope with a aperture of 62 millimeters. What really shines for me with this camera is it's 14 bit ADC. When it comes to post processing, uh, I can stretch the image a whole lot without having a lot of noise introduced into the photo. Now this telescope is great for faint objects like the Veil Nebula, um, the Flame and Horsehead Nebula, and even the Andromeda Galaxy, which is one of the brighter targets, but getting that dust on the outside of the spirals is really hard with normal cameras, but this camera does it really well. The back illuminated CMOS sensor on this camera gives it excellent low light capability. Pair that with its low dark current and you're looking at a workhorse of a ash photography camera. It does not get any better than this at its price point. Now that I've explained everything that is great about this camera, let's go ahead and look at some of the images captured with this camera. Okay, so here we are with the photos. So this was my first photo. This was a showcase on how well the 14-bit performs. Now this is only an hour of total exposure time if we go to the original image here. So if you look here, you can kind of see a little bit of the faint uh, spirals in the Bode galaxy. But if we go to the alien map, you can really, really see it. Now this is where the 14-bit shines. It shines with galaxies, with spirals, with low light dust, stuff like that. It does a really great job. So over here on the Cigar Galaxy, there is a little bit more over here. There's a lot over here as explained earlier. And yeah, so it captures a really high level of detail. Now I know this doesn't look the best, but we'll get on to the better images here in a second. Okay, so here is the sun. Now this was captured a few days ago. And you can see all of the filament up here and all the sunspots. This, this thing does a really, really good job when it comes to um, capturing the sun and planets and stuff like that. Uh, now, there is a little bit of artifacts when it comes to stacking with this camera. I don't know why. Uh, I've tried to get rid of these weird artifacts, but they never leave. So it could be... Uh, just how I shot the sun or my stacking software. I'm sure the camera is fine by itself. All right, now here is Jupiter. Now this actually turned out really, really good. Now, typically with planets, with my uh, telescope, you can't see anything. But Jupiter, you can see its bands. And I think that that was the great red spot up there. Now there's also a moon down here. Uh, it won't let me zoom in any anymore. But there's a moon down here. And yeah, so it came out really well. There's also a moon up here, that little bump right there. So yeah, let's go on to the next image. So this is the Flame Nebula. I shot this with LRGB filters and it came out really, really good. Now, there is a little bit of weird reflection on my stars and that's just because uh, there's a big scratch on my uh, UHC filter. So it causes these weird stars, but 
other than that, this image turned out really good. This was around eight hours of total exposure time. Um, now I cooled the camera down to minus 22 Celsius and I had a gain of 400 offset zero uh, and my exposures were 300 seconds. Okay, now here is that same image except stretched. Now you saw this in my last video where I was going over how well this camera can get the fainter nebulae in uh, images. Now if we look over here, if this, if you see this red, this is H alpha. Now typically you can't see this. You can only see this very, very bright um, nebula over here. Now the horse head nebula came out great. You can see all the detail, uh, the filament around the star, um, all of this filament down here, the filament over here. The camera does a really, really good job when it comes to capturing faint nebulae. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the specs on the Sony IMX 533 CMOS sensor that the SV605 has. Now, it's saying that the pixel size is 4.63, but really it's 3.76 uh, microns, which we explained earlier in the video. And the diagonal size of the sensor is 15.968 millimeters. And the resolution is roughly 9 megapixels at 3008 by 3008 pixels. Now the exposure time is a long vary. Now you can go from 0.05 milliseconds to 2000 seconds, which is a long time. Now the quantum efficiency peak is 80%. That is really good for a beginner astronomy camera. Um, now, if you're looking to upgrade from a DSLR, I'd say that this is the right camera for you since this has a really good quantum efficiency for the price that it is. Now, the readout noise is fairly low with a 1.0E. The full well is 50KE, a little bit less than the SV405CC. Now, the ADC is 14-bit as explained earlier. The maximum frame rate at full resolution is 20 frames per second. The transfer cable is a USB 3.0, which offers super fast and reliable transfer speeds. Now the back focus can vary from 6.5 millimeters to 17.5 millimeters. Now this has ROI support if you're doing fire capture uh, or if you're just viewing it through K-Stars and stuff like that. Uh, the protective window has a AR coating in front of it. Uh, there is a digital noise reduction on the camera itself. And there is binning from bin 1, bin 2, bin 3, bin 4. Now the interface type uh, is M42, which is the thread on the front of the camera, which you can thread filters, uh, adapters, uh, stuff like that. So it is a very common to have a camera with an M42 um, thread. All right, well, now that we're looking at this, I'm going to read off what SV Boney has to say about their camera. They say that the camera has an impressive 50KE full well capacity, helping to reduce the issue of, for example, saturated stars. Now, they also say that traditional CMOS sensors produce a weak infrared light source during operation, quite often seen in the corner of uncalibrated images as a telltale sign of amp glow. As the IMX 533 uses a zero amp glow design, no matter how long exposure time or how high gain, the SV605CC camera has no amp glow at all. Now the SV605 has a built-in 256 megabyte DDR3 image buffer, which is really great for um, planetary and stuff like that. But usually you can find planetary cameras with DDR4, which is a lot faster and it will transfer your images to your computer a lot faster. All right, now what is my verdict on the SV Boney 605cc? Now this camera is amazing for its price point. It is a great camera for anybody looking to switch from a DSLR to a cooled astronomy camera. This camera is the one to do it with. Its compact size, reliable cooling, and versatile sensor make it perfect for beginners, and it provides professional grade quality images while still being beginner friendly. If you're looking to upgrade your deep sky astrophotography, it is definitely worth looking at the SV Boney SV605CC. It is definitely worth it, and I'll leave a link in the description down below if you want to buy it. Now, make sure to use the code ADRIAN20 in the checkout coupon option to get $20 off this camera. As always, 
clear skies everybody and if you enjoyed this video make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below what else you want to see me do or review thank you so much sv bony for letting me have this camera to review it and give my honest opinion on your camera it is the best beginner camera i think i've ever had and i've had a great time working with you guys on this camera all right well as usual until i see you guys next time clear skies